I know you know everything about cybersecurity, at least after this wonderful afternoon, and you would be very ready to party already. But there is something between you and the party, and, and that's me, the top management. <laughs> and now it's, it's time to think that how do you sell all this? How do you sell this wonderful cybersecurity plan you have to your board and to your top management, and you get the money you want? And I'm not a cybersecurity professional myself, but I've been responsible for cybersecurity for the past, let me see, 15 years in my CIO, CDO type of roles. So first at Nokia, then at Kone, and nowadays at Aalto University. And as you heard, I'm also a board professional, so I've been serving in 10 different boards, and obviously Nixu is the best. Um, and I, so I, maybe I can tell you something, how, how board professionals see, see this topic, and how can you, how can you sell your, your case? And I think these past 15 years have been very interesting looking at the cybersecurity topic. So it's certainly the, the, the position has changed a lot. Because when I started having, having it was called IT security responsibility, I honestly said that maybe I even I didn't care too much. And certainly my boss or the CEO of the company didn't care too much. IT was seeing something as really IT operational topic, take care of that security, and CIO takes care of it, and, and nobody else cares. So that was the starting point, and I do hope you are not facing that anymore, but it might be still the case. And then it gradually became a kind of compliance topic, an audit topic. So, so then the CFO or legal department started to approach me that, hey, Kati, I think your, your people are taking care of their IT security, right? Good. Let's not talk about it anymore. So, so that was the kind of second step. But at least the CFO was kind of a little bit interested in, in, in the case. And then finally, it came up a little bit further, becoming kind of IT risk topic. And, and then it means that the board got involved. We had to have audit committees or risk committees starting to check it, or the auditors came in and saying that maybe once a year we want to see this IT risk report, and then you have your traffic lights there, and then you fix what you need to fix, and phew, it's done. But at least it was already on the board agenda. But I, I think things have evolved quite a lot uh, since then, and obviously for the whole day we've been talking about uh, cybersecurity being a business topic and a business risk. And, and, and that kind of came into the picture 10, 15 years ago already. Maybe, maybe firstly in banks and insurance companies, because they had this very high kind of needs uh, to, to be compliant, very worried about their reputation, highly regulated. And gradually that happened also in other areas, and especially now when we got GDPR and, and some of these disclosure standards, I, I think everybody is now worried about kind of business compliance. So that has already got some, some more attention in the boards. And then we uh, lately have had a kind of very security, let's say savvy companies, like Wärtsilä, like Kone, and people then want to say that, hey, security is now in our DNA. And then the top management starts to be interested in saying that, hey, we, we want to see the inve investments, we want to see the leadership to be committed, and, and also the board starts to see it like, like a capability. They start asking for training statistics and stuff like that. And then I think cybersecurity is already quite well on, on board agenda. But of course, what I hope to see more, and, and we see some companies doing that, is that cybersecurity is least, really a kind of business advantage topic. So people say that we want to excel in cybersecurity, and it's kind of core part of our product and service and everything we do. And I think that's where you want to be, right? Because then you get the money, and you get the investment. And why this is a really good time to be a kind of cybersecurity professional is that, that now we are, we are truly on the agenda for, for that, and there's a kind of huge interest for the topics, and I think there are several drivers for that, and you should utilize these drivers. And the obvious one is all the cases around us. Uh, it's not nice that, that we have cyber war ongoing or, or we have kind of serious incidents uh, around the world, but uh, un unfortunately, crises get the attention, so, so you can use that. Uh, and now the boards are worried about things that are happening, happening around us. And there are several studies that the boards say that the cybersecurity is like on the top three or four topics on their agenda. So in a way, the, the, the door is open for you to tell your story. 
Uh, then I, I think also this regulation is all the time going forward. So that's a, a kind of another good vehicle for you saying that the board is responsible. It's actually not you there being responsible, it's the board. And, and, and if, if they are not kind of concerned or worried what you are doing, then they are not doing their work. And then the third kind of positive thing I see happening is obviously rather than positive reasons uh, for taking cybersecurity as really part of the core, core business as, as we go forward. So this importance of digital assets, and obviously we are talking, looking at like Bitcoin or, or IoT coming, taking over the core business. And then it's also very natural for the board to think through that, that, that this is now core part of our, our business. So I'm, I'm really thinking that all the modern boards now re recognize both the risk side, so that the cyber threats are perhaps the biggest threats we have for our business at the moment, and they are actually on top of the agenda for very many companies also represented here. So you can use the threat story, but please use also the kind of positive business advantage story, because this, this is the way to kind of preserve the value of the company going forward. Because what assets do most companies have? It's data. And if you cannot protect your data, you will not have assets uh, going forward. And I think this is the message uh, we need to get through. That's why we need cybersecurity. But then I also like to advise you a little bit on, on how, how to talk to the board. Uh, maybe not surprisingly, uh, stop talking tech jargon. I think we tried our best today. I'm hearing a lot about business and context and risks, etc. But there was still like, you know, 15, 20% of the vocabulary I didn't recognize. Even me, that I've been responsible for this topic and working in mixed board for, for, a, for a long time. So I, I think there is still something in this sector that, that, that it's so difficult to use normal language. So please do something for that. Um, uh, then you, you have to wake them up. Not that we need to have cybersecurity because it's important or because we need these processes or procedures. And I, I think you need to bring facts to the table. Really good intelligence, what we've been talking about, is things that haven't happened yet. You need to wake the management up. It's not only after the incident. We talk a lot about it here today, but, but you need to show the facts, how much we are being attacked and, and what's happening in the, in, in the world, and, and show the numbers. And then you need to focus on the right people, as always. You need to get the whole leadership team, or let's say half of the leadership team, or half of the board, uh, kind of to support you. It's not enough that the CIO or CDO or even the head of R&D knows that this is important. The CFO needs to know. Uh, and the CEO needs to know. Otherwise, it's, it's not, not going, going through. And then another thing which I think you need to talk more about, I haven't heard too much of it, is money. Board talks about money and, and the investment cases. And I, I still hear in many boards that they have no idea how much they should invest. Literally. They don't know if, if, if it's 10,000 10, euros or if it's 1 million or if, it, uh, if it's 10 million or 100 million. They can think that it, it can be anything for, for our company or organization. So I think we need to start talking more about money and the investment and the return of the investment and also that there are remaining risks and, and, and what are those remaining risks we can take, what's the value of, of, of them. And then you talk about, you know, in business, business language. Because business managers are very used to business risks. They can evaluate them. They can evaluate the benefits and the risks. So that's the way, way to talk. And then you need to get this to stick, and it means that you need to be, be part of the corporate governance and, and this kind of regular assessments and, and core governance code and, and reporting and, and, and all that. And I, I see more and more companies now also, especially in the US, uh, setting up this kind of cybersecurity committees uh, under the board. So that at least means that cybersecurity is definitely on the agenda. So be aware, you might be soon attending your, your first cybersecurity committee meeting, and then you really need to talk board language uh, to that audience. And if you get all that done, then I'm looking a bit uh, ahead for the, for the future. Uh, what, what you need to also start talking about, we are very keen on talking about the cases and incidents that are happening 
right now, and I'm unfortunately hearing a lot about, lot about old cases. I'm really, target, really tired of hearing about target case, you know, five, was it five years ago, or even WannaCry, or something like that. Why do we keep on telling these old stories? Let's talk about future. I, I think that would be much more interesting, and looking at, looking at the kind of emerging uh, cyber uh, threat trends that are, are coming. And, and don't be kind of too narrowly focused here, talking about IT or products only. For example, spreading of disinformation is very relevant. A management discussion topic, all kinds of attacks on information, uh, kind of security, integrity, privacy, all these topics. Let, let's talk about all of them, because they are all relevant to the, to, to the board. And then we, of course, have the technology um, changes coming up. And let's not talk about cloud, that's happening already or happened already, but how about quantum technology when we get the quantum computers? How will the cybersecurity work? There might be some people here, I'm at least very interested in hearing that story. How do we need to change our, our kind of cybersecurity approaches by, by that time? But overall, I would say that it's, it's, it's wonderful that boards are becoming more aware of this topic. You are on the agenda and the doors are open, so you should be really happy about that. But then it also means that, that you need to take this responsibility to take, talk, talk to them uh, in, the, in the right way and, and then take the full responsibility. And, and the future is good as we keep the digital society going. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kati, for that very insightful talk. Um, before we, we wrap up, I, I understand we have a long time. You wanted to have a long time for questions. So please, over there, you know, at the office or at home, do send us some questions and comments for, for Kati. And also here, please do ask a question. But I, I, I would like to throw one while people are sending questions. Um, you, you mentioned about... Uh, how we should speak the language of the board as cyber professionals or security professionals to speak the language of the board. How about training the boards to understand the language of cyber security? You know, there's, there, are, there are many um, courses in every country, in Canada where I come from and in Finland you have this professional board course you go through where you learn a lot about finance, you learn a lot about legal stuff and other things, but should there be a micro little part of the curriculum where we upgrade the, the reception capability of board members to understand cyber issues. Yes, we, we should, and that's a very, very good point that we also need to educate the board. And, and, and uh, it, it's funny because they all know now what CDPR is, yeah. but yeah. still they don't know some of our other acronyms. So, yeah. so what, what there is, that's why I'm saying that this, this code and, and governance type of trainings are very important. If you get something which is kind of mandatory for all the, all the corporations, then they are usually interested in, 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 in learning more. But I'm at least trying to push all my colleagues that they, they, they should understand a little better, and, and uh, also take the role in your organizations to have this everyday cybersecurity uh, trainings uh, available, because they actually improve your own position. When, when the whole mass of people learn a little bit more, then they also start to respect what, what you are doing as the kind of professional there. Mm. So that's, that's very beneficial for everybody. Well, I'm going to take a, a corporate risk now, and I'm going to mix some high management with board members on the same stage. I'm gonna invite Jan back to the stage. Give him a big hand. Uh, now we're taking risks. Now we're taking risks. <laughs> now, now this is a risk. There, there, there goes the budget. Yeah, 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 goes, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to, to you know, in, in this particular case, um, you know, how have you it's probably easy for, 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 for Nixu, but has this been a problem from what you see? You know, you've been, you've been how many years in this? I, I've seen you at these events for like 10 years or something like that. I've uh, been in the, kind of in the field, of, let's say around 15, 20 years. 15, but, 20, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so, so you probably have, can you echo what Katya said, that it's, it's hard to make your point to the board, to upper management. Yeah. How has that evolved from your perspective as, a, as an expert and now a leader and management leader of, of a company? 
Yeah, of course, uh, during my kind of career also, we, we have kind of as, as I've progressed on the career, I've been kind of coming closer to the board. So, of course, in the early days, uh, th those were like some mysterious kind of creatures somewhere that you never <laughs> see or hear, hear about. But uh, and if you do, it's probably a problem more than <laughs> and, and an opportunity. And uh, But of course, uh, especially now, we kind of have a, quite of a open and a direct dialogue on many topics and uh, maybe kind of hard to reflect in a way since Nixu is all all about cybersecurity, yeah. then that it's it's kind of part of everything. So, so I guess we kind of talk cyber in a way, but we're focusing kind of it, it's kind of given in a way, and then and then we're discussing all different aspects of it. But, but having said that, uh, I think that one thing that has changed quite dramatically over the years is that the board has started to ask questions regarding cybersecurity uh, during my career as well. So, so. Uh, uh, first, it was like preaching to the choir there somewhere down in the organization and, and, uh, and uh, got literally kind of zero attention. But then at some stage, I don't know, 10 years back or something, the board started asking, so are you kind of up to the job or not? And uh, I guess that's where the kind of awareness then yeah. was well elevated. So, yeah, Kati. It's all about money, and I do foresee that we are getting <laughs> separate cybersecurity yeah. budgets, that they are not becoming part of IT budget or part of R&D budget, and actually discuss this even on a, on a national level. If we look at like what Finnish government is spending on, on, on kind of security and, and defense forces, we should at, uh, look at these slides for, for cybersecurity. Uh, kind of protection and all that area, and, and it, it, it's it's going to grow. That's that's obvious. Uh, what we what we need. So so, in, and then it becomes sports attention again because mm. it's about the kind of how big investments we 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 need to need to make. And we have a question in the chat about something that you raised in your in your uh, great opening on the business case for, for cybersecurity. So Asim, thank you, Asim, sending this question. He, he asks, how can we calculate the business case if security is primarily a cost? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a classic question, but, but <laughs> now I, I guess again, we, if we look at, look at the war and we look, look, look at what we are investing in kind of uh, preventing and protecting our country, so, so that's obviously kind of one harsh case to explain that yeah. you need to invest to have that capability so that nothing happens. But in, in business terms, I, I think it's more useful to talk about kind of business downtime, uh, what's the kind of impact for business. Uh, we can measure the impact uh, for reputation. There is yeah. a cost for that, and that's actually a main interest for many of the board members. Only secondary are the op operational uh, issues, yeah. uh, loss of trust, uh, loss of uh, customer confidence. And so you can start putting some price tags uh, for, for those what you are preventing. So certainly not only responding to, to incidents, but, but pr preventing things that can destroy your business. Mm. And then as, as I explained, when they really become part of your core offering, then of course the value is the whole, whatever you are producing, your whole, whole mm. product mm. Or, or your whole, whole service offering. So then it's definitely not, not the cost. It's like your key asset to mm. produce what you do. Is this, Jan, a part of the sales process? Because you're, you're, sell you're selling very valuable mm -hmm. consulting and technology. Do you also embed you know, a, a lexicon of things that should be there so that not only your colleagues in cybersecurity in the house, but also leaders and, why not, board members would understand the value of this proposition? Do you mm -hmm. do that? Yeah, well, I, I'm, uh, I'm convinced that we've at, le at least tried to do that. Uh, <laughs> having said that, I, I also kind of uh, I, I heard it loud and clear on, on your presentation there that, yeah, we as a group kind of need to start uh, speaking human, and, <laughs> and I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and uh, it's, of course, it's also a tough job. We need to kind of educate ourselves to kind of understand that what, what does the, the other part to kind of... Uh, expect uh, to hear, how do we justify, how do we kind of uh, show return on investment or something. It's, it's not an easy task uh, because mainly we're kind of involved in all kind of techy stuff that's, uh, and uh, for many of us it's also the kind of thing that gets us going. Uh, we heard, for instance, Joni, he was his kind of eyes lighting up when he's talking about incident response and uh, <laughs> forensics and, and from the board perspective you would kind of want to avoid those altogether, right? So, <laughs> so, so that very different You were great, inspiring. Yoni. I thought yes. you were great. I thought you were great, but everything yeah. has a context. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
very good point. Listen, um, any questions uh, from the audience here live? We, our chat is a bit silent. Sir, can you give him the microphone? Yes, hello, Jari Östaberg from UPM. So uh, one question for Ms. Hagrus and also then for Mr. Mikos. So if we think about shared responsibility, that is no responsibility. What is in a way tradition? I'm sorry. Could you speak a little bit closer? Yes. Yeah. Thank, yep. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. third responsibility is naturally and commonly kind of interpreted that there is no responsibility, and the board and also the management is very used to the word accountability. Miss Hagrus, how do you see the board? Should there be somebody named as responsible for cybersecurity? Because traditionally on a board there are nominations for the head of the committees, things like that. But at least in our company, we don't have yet cybersecurity committee, so we don't have a nomination. So what is your view on that one? And then Mr. Mikos, how do you see also for the executive teams? Should there be somebody responsible? And one reason why I'm asking this, I'm CISO at our company, and I would like to have somebody to stand on the same line with me. Thank you. Mm, great question, yes. Accountabilities and responsibilities are needed. Even though you ask from Jan, I do think that on executive level, so the management team level, there should be a clear responsibility. Uh, and, and, and whether it's CISO directly but some, or somebody uh, that from from other from from the team, uh, but then in the board, of course, board in a way is a, is a quorum, so it's actually it doesn't have individual responsibilities. But but the what's happening right now it, is that people are asking more and more that are there capable people in the board, and does at least somebody or hopefully two persons know there. And by the way, this is good news to you because you you will have much more board prof professional careers and opportunities ahead of you because those people are needed who are able to ask the CISOs the right questions. And I'm sure you know that it's sometimes that it's nobody understands what you are, what you are talking about. And I also think that the kind of good boards uh, listen to their CISO directly, even though it, he or she wouldn't be part of the management team. So this is a kind of the same way you want to hear, listen to your auditors or some key people in the uh, uh, organization. But yeah, in, in a way, it, it should be on the boards agenda and there should be enough knowledge. But what are your views on the responsibilities? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick on the part that you addressed to me. And uh, I'm, I was kind of here while listening, kind of uh, uh, thinking to myself that it's, I see it kind of as a kind of a dual edged sword in a way. It's, it's yes, good to have kind of someone with clear responsibility and accountability. Having said that, I think it's, it's also kind of a matter of kind of a, uh, awareness and general leadership in a way and, and kind of making cybersecurity part of the business culture in general. And that's maybe the thing there that if, if you kind of isolate the responsibility too much, then the rest of the guys are kind of saying, yeah, okay, it's, it's, she'll take care of it, so not, not on my table. And, and that becomes a problem. So, so kind of keeping those in balance uh, would be the best thing to do there. And, and uh, I would consider having it kind of cybersecurity uh, part of the kind of business risk management of every leader or at all levels in the organization, but then someone kind of having responsibility of leading that kind of awareness and situational awareness uh, throughout the organization. Or, or giving the practices and, and yeah. processes and, and giving the advice on technologies and so forth. But yeah. uh, again, if you want to have a good cybersecurity culture, it needs to be the whole leadership team. Otherwise, yeah. it's not culture. Yeah. If it's just CISO there <laughs> shouting that, hey, let's take care of this, it's, it's not yeah. really Mm. company culture mm. as, as a whole. Do you have any good management leadership hacks for cybersecurity? I mean, you know, of course, there are, we have systems, we have fancy software, but we, you know, we heard from Mati that it's not all about technologies, it's about context, it's about collaboration. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being creative here, but, you know, uh, you know, a lot of Finns go, you know, for, you know, once a, a couple of years, they go to the army for a week or two and, mm -hmm. you know, get into the mood of, <laughs> of, of defending the country. It's, I mean, and, and they get a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Are there hacks like that, you know, uh, um, a, a two-day power day for ma all management members? Uh, is there uh, something that happens on a, maybe a, a monthly basis that could be done? Or uh, innovative, yes. very maybe yeah. even low-tech 
uh, solutions that ensure a, a greater cybersecurity awareness and culture throughout the organization. I, I think we should invent more, more of them, but definitely, yes, I always believe in this, show me, don't tell me. So, yeah. so it, yeah, it yeah. becomes so much more evident if you, if you kind of uh, experience something, even little thing you're, you're, yourself. So I'm organizing a little hacks every now and then. Okay. You're not allowed to do this, but I've, I've done this to my <laughs> CEO and, and, and my boss that, that, that when he or she has left, his laptop open and I'll, I'll change something. No, <laughs> you don't I've do done that, that because I'm responsible for cybersecurity, then I can do it. Others are not allowed to do it. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty effective. He or she remembers that afterwards, that, okay, hack. I'm not, not leaving my, my laptop open or, or things like that. And I, I very much believe in all kinds of uh, kind of cases and uh, rehearsals and making it as, as tangible as, as possible. So I think we should have them in in company culture and you should invent more of this. And don't be too sophisticated and techy here. I think that's the problem. We need to yeah. really make simple cases which are kind of fun and a bit game-like and, and uh, organize a game and then you're sending something funny to everybody who clicked the phishing mail or something like that. So, so I, I think these kind of events and things we should organize. Now I know why you're such a popular board member. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Well done indeed. Any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of take another example. So, so for instance, in, in the past, I've been doing quite a bit on, on kind of a going and attending uh, leadership uh, team meetings for, for client organizations that are not in the cybersecurity business, but uh, doing some other business. And uh, because in many cases, it's, uh, it's also the, the kind of, they have been listening to those uh, internal, the, the, the CISOs, the Yaris and others, uh, kind of telling them all sorts of stuff. But it, at times it might help to kind of have have external kind of help reflecting and uh, also maybe kind of speaking more amongst peers in a way and, and, and by doing that kind of raising awareness and ultimately helping out then the CISO team there to get the support again of, of the mm. overall leadership. So this type of things we had a lot of kind of on the uh, today about kind of collaboration maybe we could do kind of round tables uh, uh, on the topic between amongst leaders in other different organizations and stuff so to kind of really reflect. Excellent insights.